Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. This is Casa Spade today. Welcome to Hump Day. Or, you know, Wednesday. It is June 19th, 2024. Day 171. Robbie Rotten! Before we continue on, happy June 19th, everyone. Make sure you go and enjoy yourselves today. But uh, outside of all of that, I, 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 I wanted to take this opportunity to, first of all, Oh, all those guys for yesterday. Because I'm not really thrilled with how yesterday went in the black hat. I'm. Eh, I should have taken Terra's advice and not spent time there. I should have gone like anywhere else that that's busy, like the pond or something, because it's not cross platform. But as we were getting ready to set up, and, you know, do our daily today. We went on X, or formerly Twitter, and saw a post brought up by VR chat, actually, on a, um, on a Washington Post article written up. Unfortunately, it's paywall, so I can't read the article. But the gist of the article is stating that people are choosing virtual worlds over real life. Being that people are spending time online and in virtual worlds like the art chat. Or like I am being second life MMOs or just games and social media in general virtually on their phones, computers, other devices. People are spending more time there than they are out in the real world. Which, um Sadly, I understand quite a bit of that, and I see every single bit. But we're going to take this opportunity, and we're going to go over the various, um... I'd love to take the opportunity to talk about this, and kind of touch on my own thoughts and feelings about this... Ever, uh, I can't say emerging, this has long been emerging, because... Believe it or not, Tara and I have been part of the internet for 25 years? No, longer. We've been part of the internet for almost 30 years now. Like, we, we've been on the inter internet doing things since 1995. So we've been, we've been on the internet for a very long time. We remember when the, uh, the major Instant Messenger programs were become were emerging and being really popular. I believe it or not, before AOL Instant Messenger, there was also Yahoo Messenger. And that was... Well, in the early days of Yahoo Messenger, they also had public rooms you could go into. We, we even remember our first username on there when we went to Yahoo Messenger in the year 2000. It was 1999-2000 uh, was when we joined that one. The public rooms didn't last very long there, but they were... Well, they were interesting, to say the least. But... Being that we were in... We, we grew up along the time when people were just starting to really move to online interactions over real-life interactions. So, we were at the, at the perfect age to be part of it and also observe both the positive and negative effects of being ever so long line. Where we still have friends that we hung out with. We went out and did things all the time. In fact, uh, Tara's best friend, Crescendo, um, he, he now lives like 30 miles from us. We both moved. Well, the same state we grew up in, and now we both live in the same state now, which is pretty awesome. He's, he's an awesome guy. Crescendo is awesome. But Tara and Crescendo, they, when, when they would hang out, they would save up their allowances, and they would go to places like Rite Aid and Winco Foods, because they used to live by Winco Foods. And they would, they would get, like, snacks or candy. Over at Winco, though, th that one got them into a little bit of trouble with their junior high because they would buy the big, huge, like, two-inch plus diameter jawbreakers. Because, uh, Winco Foods has bulk food, which includes bulk candy. They would go out, 
and they would buy those and they'd save some of them and they resell them to people at school and that got them in trouble because it was an unlicensed business. Not to mention, so someone called them the Candy Man, and uh, well, being someone cannot afford you, you don't want that title because it usually had to do with cocaine, which Tara has never seen in his life, by the way. He doesn't bother with drugs. He doesn't like them. So when he learned that's what they really meant, he dropped the title and stopped selling candy to begin with. But it was an unlicensed business, and he got suspended for it anyway. But then they would hang out. They do that. They eat the head on a bow. Once every two months, they would be out really late with Crescendo's father, and they would go out and play laser tag. Back when this was back when laser tag was starting to lose popularity, like you know, actual laser tag arenas. Tons of fun. They even had a um. This place even had, like, a mech assault arcade game where you actually sat and it was like you were in the cockpit of a giant mech. But they had those experiences, and this was also the same time when New Grails was really picking up steam, so the, the old bad things of New Grails were gaining popularity. And the chat websites like AOL, Yahoo, MSN, and, well, MySpace, really, that was kicking off pretty heavy. Heavily when they were to, when they hung out. Like when people learned and knew how to do HTML documentation was pretty often star. But we all experienced the uh worse I almost never call it the magic of being online. Oh, and there was there was another old one that was fun. It was a 16-bit uh social platform where you could actually have an avatar that walked around, you could sit down and talk to other people. Believe it or not, it was Percadia. Percadia. So uh just just bring that one up. You can tell we we've been around for a while. We've been around for quite a while. But we we saw the positives and negatives of an ever online lifestyle where it took a degree of I wanna say back oh um not just emotional self control. What's the word I'm looking for? Um Patience, I guess. But it involves emotion. Let's see. Um, I still, uh, I keep coming back to emotional self-control, and all self-control does play a role in it. Um, <laughs> oh no, empathy? No, empathy and empathy. Really, it's your patience. It still involves your patience level, and um. The ability to take things seriously versus not taking things seriously. What is that? I keep losing the phrase because it's been a while since I really thought heavily on that phrase. Um. Yeah, I can't remember. It's been, it's been a while. But we, we also had that unique opportunity of... Watching people's social cohesion decline. Where now it's a lot harder for people to socialize in real life. Though I, I highly encourage people to try more often. I really do. Because even I, like, even Terry and myself, when, when we're out, we still talk with people. We try very hard to talk with people, especially our neighbors, since, you know, we're at the age where. You want to talk about people and dogs, you know, pooping on the lawn. But you learn how to have positive interactions and then how to deal with negative interactions. Conflict management uh, can come into play. Which, by the way, if you're online all the time, it's really important that you, you deal and learn conflict management skills. Like, they one of those um, city work classes where, you know, some some cities they have work classes and seminars that you can be part of that are city funded in order to prepare yourself for, you know, going into a workplace, say if you've been homeless for a while or anything like that, and you take those classes, one of the most important ones you can take is conflict management because it helps you learn to deal with empathy plus apathy. Like, really, um, 
balancing the two. Uh, I almost had the word. I almost had it. I almost had it, and then I lost it again. Every time it comes close, I lose it again. But uh, what is that word? I want to remember the word. Uh, don't like it when it happens. But, um... Yeah, conflict management, it, it, it's one you should learn because it teaches you to have disagreements with people in a constructive and non-destructive manner where you can also resolve differences. Cause people, a lot of people I know hear conflict management and think of like war zones or something where you're actually fighting with people. No, it's a simple disagreement. And you can learn to manage with disagreements and agree to disagree kind of thing without coming to blows or ex exploding in your face. And what we've experienced being online as long as we have is the point in which people begin to shut down emotionally or have breakdowns, you know, emotional breakdowns. Um, I went to anger and, and uh, uh, go to anger or just disassociate from something or, you know, just being quick to anger or all of the negative aspects of social interaction. Um, they, uh, the point in which the people reach that point has grew up. Actually, I can't say rapidly. It's now rapid, but it's been, it's been a gradual decrease where people have struggled to social interactively, whether it's at school, at work, at home, or, you know, outside. And the one, and the people who struggle with it the most are the ones who spend way too much time online. I'm talking like the majority of their time is on a social platform, whether it's X, formerly Twitter, Facebook. Um, people used to be, or Tumblr, well, Tumblr was one of the worst ones, but now I'd say the worst one is probably... I don't argue it's probably Reddit, which I, I, files. um, my social well-being is still I, arguably higher than other pe a lot of other people I know, even though I am in a rough situation here at all. Like, what, what, things are pretty rough here, but mentally I'm handling it better because I'm not on Reddit. We don't, I've never had a Reddit account. Never. And I, I have zero plans to ever have a Reddit account. But the people I've known that are almost always on Reddit, Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, Tumblr, did I say Tumblr? I hope they Tumblr again. But the people who are always on the social platforms seem to have a lower emotional well-being. I, I deal with my own mental problems, obviously. People have seen my episodes, and which uh, they did troublesome. But... I, I spend a lot more time thinking to myself and while well, meditating. But the, the more we see these drops in social cohesion, we worry. And what people are dealing with is, how should I say? I'm trying to think of all the right words. And part of it is when I'm having serious conversations like this is a little difficult, especially out loud. I have them with myself all the time, but when I actually try to speak them, it gets difficult. And part of that, again, is I'm not used to interacting with people. So I do have a similar situation that we're covering because I have an easier time typing things than I do speaking them. You're going to see that more and more and more. But we did have that. We did have the unique situation, or being in the unique position of seeing this evolution of social interaction and online behavior. But with people choosing online platforms, is not what you think. It's actually a stress management thing, where people's ah, tolerance, people's tolerance. And ability to tolerate stressful situations has rapidly declined to where they now where you it's now a situation where people grow up not learning emotional tolerance. 
where they're encouraged to go online, encouraged to only stay in their happy place, where, you know, they, they have their stress relief course, where the, the, the speed in which people go to their stress relief, you know, stress relief mode or shutdown mode is their, their threshold is a lot lower than it used to be. Where, um, a, a, an easy example I can do are children where if they need to do something at school, it's very rapid, it's a very rapid situation where it goes from, could you do, could you do your classwork to them being in a car, stress relief to all of a sudden, you know, and they're, and they're a little, um, they call it the cool down core. And my daughter, or has dealt with this and not just her but her other classmates are very rapid to go to the cool down course and this is an emerging phenomenon where people just don't have emotional understanding or self-control and a lot of it tends to be where there's too much encouragement to shy away from dealing with a stressful situation where people are less willing to deal with something that's stressful, even though when they're at home or in their comfort zone, they treat themselves in a constant state of agitation. Where even if they're doing something they, they do to stress relief, like say people, some people go on Twitter or, you know, X or Facebook or anything like that and look at things to make them laugh or, you know, just get a load off their mind yet as soon as they're on there it rapidly turns into interacting with the most negative of topics and and content that are on these platforms and you see that oh uh, even here in, in vr chat you see that in vr chat you see it on facebook you see it on youtube where the most some of the most successful things that people get addicted to is negativity and part, part of that's human nature it is it is somewhat human nature to be attached to oh i wouldn't exactly say attached but a hyper fixation on negative stimuli and part of that is because of our genetic instinct of fight or flight where neg negative things usually in, in the old days were life or death where a negative thing knowing what to what negative thing to avoid or deal with and recognize could be a matter of living dying or you know procreating whether or not you had a food on the table, all of these negative things because of how quickly things could change. But we're, we're in a point in, in society where we don't have those problems, but we still have those baser instincts when it comes to negative stimuli. But now we're constantly surrounded by negative stimuli because we have that innate need to be aware of what's negative versus what's not. And the social interactions, even minor or otherwise, keep us hyper fixated on it because that's our base or instinct. And rather than knowing how to deal with the situation, people are choosing more and more avoidance. And the, the constant need for avoidance, yet finding yourselves constantly trapped with negative stimuli is also, well, it's addiction. And people are always talking about being addicted to your tablets or your phone or your consoles. But what was, what was the worst one? Because you had, that's the constant access to emotional stimuli, whether positive or negative. And it, it is a constant source of dopamine. Or adrenaline, if you want some adrenaline. I know some adrenaline junkies too. But... <laughs> Your phone is a constant access to stimuli and artificial. And, and that's why I know a lot of people who are extremely addicted to their phones as they get older also get addicted to drugs and or alcohol. I mean, Tara and I were addicted to alcohol. Well, my goodness, we were addicted to it for our stuff. Oh man, we were addicted to it for 15 years. All 15 years, we, we were drinking all the time. I'm, I'm glad those days are 
pretty much over and I'd like them to remain over. But... If, if you saw now... How yesterday went... Where... There was only, only so much I could put up with yesterday being in the black cat of all places. And part of it isn't just my inability to deal with something stressful. It also has to go with other people. So, you know, the whole it takes Tim to tango kind of thing. Where other people, especially, uh, I, I'd say especially younger, um, have a lower understanding of what people will tolerate. And part of that is... They're in the generation that grew up already online. They already had devices, probably since they were toddlers, or even worse, even some people, babies. But they grew up online, and they only saw the worst of us. So they grew up only seeing the worst of what people can be. Rather than the best, they saw narcissism, they saw hatred, they saw racism. Because if these people are, you know, like the one who was bantering around yesterday saying they were 15 and they were the ones talking about my genitals, by the way. I leave appropriate. Think about it, 10 years ago, in a public situation, in a public situation, that person would have been chastised. But now they grew up in an environment where that is practically encouraged. Where these are the only interactions they see because people will hyper fixate on what does not stress them out. And because of always being in their comfort zones, when they're outside of their personal space and interacting with people in their personal sport, in, in public spaces, in public discourse, they now less ability to acknowledge the needs of others, you know, and basically the lacking of empathy and lacking of social limits. Societal norms, if you will. And it only gets more difficult as years go on, where you, it, really people, people are selfish by nature. It's our nature because that's how we keep ourselves alive is by being somewhat selfish. But we do have to learn some selfless traits here and there and learn when to care. And it, it, it's been difficult. But the most important thing people should be doing is learning how to deal with stressful situations how do you minimize those from getting worse? And how to deal with their own emotions? And how to, boy, something negative happens, whether it's online or real life, but because it's, it's so often where people will, a socially online will dogpile on all the negative things, and you'll notice the negative feedback them where people get more and more angry at each other, to where it takes, let, uh, think, think about the number of, Slottings have happened for online personalities, whether especially with the streamers. The number of slottings have only increased, and the number of doxing and people showing up at people's houses because of online interactions. And a lot of that is because people have lower uh, social patience levels, and they almost believe that it's expected of them to take things too far because they don't understand social limits. And a lot of it is because it's in, it's it's encouraged, whether consciously or subconsciously, it becomes an encouraged behavior because they're only surrounded by that behavior. They're they're not in public; they're in their little souls and their little groups. And you can you can see those even if you look at people who follow each other on X or on Facebook, you can see the pattern of behavior in each of these groups. And how, how it spills over to groups that don't behave that way. To where eventually that kind of negative stimuli and behavior spills over into the real world because they don't know how to interact with the real world anymore. Really, they need exposure therapy. They need to be off their devices more often. And the most important thing they need to do is stop listening to yourself. 
Well, especially, especially out in the real world. Stop listening to yourself all the time because possibly being around negative stimuli in your comfort zone is going to leave you with a very warped view of the world. And that's why the world seems like it's only getting worse. Because you're only seeing what the internet is showing you. You can have very positive interactions in the real world. In fact, I so we seldom ever have negative interactions in the real world. I think some of the worst ones we ever had were like, uh, that person who threatened to stab us because we were texting on our phone in the store and they thought we were recording them. And again, if you think about that one, they thought we were recording them because they thought someone would, because they were already in an agitated state when they came out. They obviously were not sober at the time either. But because all they do is they see negative interactions of people recording negative behavior to out, you know, use the cancel culture out someone. They thought someone merely having their phone out meant they were, they were recording them to get them in trouble. Because that's all they see online. And they don't, they don't have the capacity. They don't have the, the they don't have the, the, the second thought of saying, hey, maybe this person is just, you know, messaging someone. Because that does happen. People do message each other, especially as like if I need to find out, hey, do you need bread? But people don't do that anymore. They immediately think, what are they doing to me? Because they, because of how much negativity they see constantly online because of our own and they inhibitions. They are going to think anything that happens in the world might be directed at them. Unfortunately, the people who bring the negativity up the most in online environments are the narcissists. Because everything's about them, they will always have the loudest voice and you have to learn how to just turn them out. It's, it's difficult. It can be very difficult. Especially because it, it takes a lot to shut down a narcissist, to get them to just, you know, shut up. It, it, it is, it is very difficult to do that. And I'm, like, even I constantly worry, hey, am I still in narcissistic traits? I often worry about that. But the, the best thing you can do for yourself if you find yourself in situations where you are struggling to interact with people because you're only thinking the worst. Like you only think of the worst in people and you only think they're going to be the worst. Where you're, only, you're constantly thinking the world is negative. Spend like, even take a week of just Put your device down, oh, especially to social media, just avoid the social media and go out in your neighborhood a little more. Take walks. If you see someone, just say hello. The reason why there are even other people, which I have experienced, by the way, where I just might even say hello and be accused of racism because I waved and said hello. That makes sense to me. That makes no sense. But what I think about the other, I also think about the other person. When I think about them, they must be in a position where their whole worldview has become the world is racist and hates you. And if they're being nice, they must want something from you or to, or to upset you. And that's what it becomes. Where they think the world's out to get them, when someone can just be saying, Hey, how are you? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Which, I do hope someone's having a wonderful day. I, I, I try to make an effort to let people have a good day. I know I keep grabbing this, I'm sorry. But, even I'm trying to stay comfortable and not have my body leave me. Big love alligator moment. But, uh, the more people love interact away from their devices, the more agreeable they can be, or the more um, docile, the more docile people will be if they're off their devices more. If you get, in fact, for the parents out there, if you're having children that are struggling emotionally and socially, tell them, okay, I need to take your device away for a while. I understand how important devices can be for communication, well, there is such thing as too much. 
tell them, okay, that we need the word up. Even, even you set an example by doing it yourself too. Put your device up and say, it doesn't mean you have to put your device up and play a board game. I hate board games. I, I am never, we will never have Monopoly in this household. We will never have Monopoly because Monopoly is stupid. But it doesn't mean play a board game, play a card game, do everything together and be all hunky-dory. Just find something to do, not on a device. Clean your ring, in the kitchen, do some yard work. I, we're doing yard work more often. And I can definitely tell you, the less time we've been spending on social media, which, believe it or not, we do spend, we still spend way too much time on social media, but we spend less than we ever, than we have even last year. We've reduced how much time we're online socializing with people by about 75%. And our emotional well-being has exceeded expectations. Emotionally, I feel a lot better. I'm not interacting with AI. I'm not interacting with bots. I'm not in interacting with polls online nearly as often as we used to. I, we still have our difficult moments. We still have difficult moments because they do happen. We're not perfect. I never want to be perfect. I never want to try to be perfect. But I do want to improve myself. I want to make improvements with myself emotionally and spiritually. I want to be a better person. And one thing that's been helping with that is just not being online all the time. I can understand not being online at all can be an issue because we have an um, we have an internet connected society. It's gonna be hard to do business or keep up to date with things going on without an internet connection. I can understand that. And you're only going to get so much information interacting with people outside, but believe it or not, a physical interaction, and I don't mean fistic cups, by the way, I don't mean that, I mean a physical interaction being you're outside, not on your phone, and you just say hello to someone, say like a neighbor down the street or even at a grocery store, those are the majority of our interactions. You will feel better in that moment, you will give it if it's a positive interaction. I mean, the, weird, the weirdest one we've ever had was with someone, you know, bumming for money. Or, you know, panheads wing the way, hey, you got any change? And it's like, we didn't have any change, we were broke. And I, and I said, I apologize, we don't have any money to give, we have no money. And then they said we were racist because we wouldn't give them money. Believe it or not, that happened two years ago. It was a very weird one. And uh, anytime we see that person um, in front of a store, we go around, we take a long trip around the store because we just don't want to interact with them. We already know what to expect from them. They're going to ask for money and then get angry when you don't have money. And we long since learned not to give money to panhandlers out here or in the previous city we were in. We just don't do it for good reason. Because um, the last city we lived in, we gave someone money because they were asking and we had it available. Then they got mad because it, it was only a little bit. We gave them, well, I think like four dollars. And then they nearly mugged us because we didn't give them more. So we don't deal with beggars. For that reason. But because we didn't have money and didn't have anything to give to begin with, we were... It becomes the, like the... Darned if you do, darned if you don't kind of thing. It, it, it's not fun. But... <sighs> Not every interaction is going to be positive. But you have to learn how to deal with negative interactions and how to actually deal with something stressful. Stress management is important, but stress management becomes more difficult the more often you only go to um, comfort tools like you know, some people, you know, the old stereotype where someone would eat a tub of ice cream when they had a really bad situation. Say like a bad breakup or, you know, got fired and they eat a tub of ice cream. That old stereotype. What we don't, we don't see that very often. But, but, the number of situations that require people going to comfort foods or comfort tools 
has only increased because it takes less and less for them to feel the need to go to what makes them comfortable. Because they no longer know how to deal with stressful situations. I know people personally in my life that struggle with stressful situations to the point where the smallest of negative stimuli, the smallest of them, I'm talking someone used a tone in their voice that they perceived as negative, immediately turns to needing a dog to their comfort zone, whether it's their phone, boom, or alcohol. I've seen these things and it only continues to increase because they're allowing themselves to do that by not dealing with what is stressful. In life, you have to deal with stressful things. They're going to happen whether you like it or not. But knowing how to deal with them and the appropriate response is an important learning lesson for people. You have to learn how to respond appropriately to a negative stimuli and say, okay, what, like, Zeke, if you do that at work, Somewhere along the line, you're going to lose your job. And a lot of people my age, and especially younger, struggle to keep work, keep jobs because of the lack of conflict management skills. And those are one of the many things that I believe. But I think I've done plenty of ranting on this one, so I thought to, oh, actually, I was going to go to a public world, not the black cat. To go and show examples of social cohesion. But I think I'm gonna have to leave that for like Friday or something. Or maybe I'll make Tara do it tomorrow on Thursday. Maybe that's what I'll do. Is I'll make him go to a public world instead of me. Although, I'll see if he even does. He doesn't like, he likes talking to people less than I do. Online, of course. We don't, we don't really like talking to people online. Ever. We prefer uh, uh, real life interactions, really. And part of that is, we, we have built for us, real life interactions are easier than online because people are less angry in real life compared to online. But that said, being online, you get addicted to being angry. So keep that in mind, people. Keep that in mind. But I have rambled enough. Give all of that, looks like food for thought kind of thing. It's, it's food for thought. Think about what are your good stress manage. What, what helps you manage stress? Not avoid. We're not talking avoidance. There is a time to avoid and a time to manage. Think about what your good stress management tools are and how to share them with other people. What do you do when you when your stress is too much? But remember, but remember, not to let. To me, things become a, I need to manage my stress by going into my happy place. Because then you're going to lose your ability to deal with stressful situations. You don't want to be in a position where you can no longer deal with stressful situations because you are going to be in a constant state of anxiety and helplessness. You don't want that. You want to be... Or, I, I guess you want to be confident. You want confidence in your abilities. Which means you have to exercise them. Doesn't mean put yourself in stressful situations. No, oh, oh, oh. do not put yourself in a stressful situation just to practice these things. You're gonna get addicted to just putting yourself in stressful situations. Yeah, I don't want it. So just, when they come up, Think the situation through and what can help sometimes, especially if it's an interaction with another person. Try to think about what they're thinking as well, or think about how to just calm the situation down. Think about, or even ask. It helps to listen to people, too. Just like you've been listening to me banter off this entire time. But I would like to know your thoughts, too. I would like to know how you deal with stressful situations. Do you spend more time dealing with them, or do you spend more time avoiding them? These are things to ask yourself, or even talk about when the opportunity arises. Anyway, again, I apologize for this long, long-winded rant. 
but I saw I saw the post from the R chat on X and I felt it was necessary to talk about because we have seen this grow and grow and grow ever since we've been online since night like I said 1995 to the point where when it reached its worst was actually in 2022. Not 2019, not 2018, 2018, okay, let's just say 2017 through 2019 were bad, but then things, oh, they actually calmed down a bit when, in 2020, but that's because everyone was forced to be in the same situation anyway. But 2021, 2022, 2023, and now 2024, these have been very, the like, I, I have noticed in the past four years that people's ability to deal with stress, stress management, has just gone in the gutter to where now it's mostly substance. Well, substance is definitely on the decline as of this year. Substance is on the decline. But using rules or have not, that's it. Escapism is on the rise. In the past couple years, escapism has been on the rise. So stop looking for things to escape the smallest of situations because they're only going to continue sh like the, the reason you'll need to escape a situation is only going to shrink and by that i mean you need a smaller and smaller reason to turn to escapism the where it's like oh no i can't find my sock better get on the internet <laughs> shut up i did not i am so sorry but i believe that that that's a humorous way of putting it yes you were you work in hell, but comedy does need to come back anyway. People need to laugh. Learn to laugh at something stupid. Anyway, I apologize for ranting as long as I have. Next time I'll attempt another public world, but it is time I get going because I've ranted more than long enough. So, this is Tessa Spade on your hump day. We like hump days. Hump days are awesome. Very. But this is home day June 10th, 2024, day 171. We will see you all tomorrow. Please take care, everyone.